one of the very cool aspects of the G1 that's not all that practical is the optional gesture control for security. Once the device is unlocked, it requires a, instead of a security code in terms of a numeric code, it requires you to hit a particular pattern. Now if I hit the wrong pattern, it doesn't let me in. If I do the correct pattern, it unlocks the device. Again, wrong pattern, denied access, correct pattern, get you in. And you can set that pattern to whatever you want as long as it's, I think, four links long. Something that will be somewhat familiar to iPhone users is the concept of multiple desktops. So the main one always comes up when you go to the home screen, but you can go left and right to get to different ones with different functions. You know, there's a Google search. I've got a picture here. I've got some web shortcuts put right here. If I just click on that, it'll take me directly to the CNN website. Another handy feature on the G1 is knowing that if you just hold down the home key, it'll bring up a list of recently used applications so you can quickly get around. Now you can see I navigate with the trackball or I can just touch it myself. And the home key always takes you back to the standby screen. G1 supports a number of different gestures for doing things. So one of them, of course, is the basic tap. You just tap on a on-screen control, like that for the menu. But it also supports swipes, especially anywhere where you see those little three bars. That shows that you can grab it. And you can extend the menu that way. You can also get to the status indicators by dragging them down. You can see what's happened recently. We installed Shop Savvy and Pac-Man, and it's reminding me that all my calls are forward. You can tap on it to get to the appropriate application, or you can just clear them to get them out of the way. If you're not satisfied with the default icons that show up on the home screen, you can always add your own. Just pull up the menu, long press on one, you'll feel a vibration, then you can just drag it wherever you like. If you long press it again, the screen will vibrate again, and then you can move it. If you move it to the edge slowly, it'll move from one virtual screen to the next. Most of the on-screen widgets can be moved like that. There are other things you can add to the screen than just applications. Long press on it. Uh, we'll put a widget up um, and let's choose a picture frame. Now the picture frame is going to have us choose a photo to add. We'll look through and see which ones we like. We're going to go back to this FedEx box because we love FedEx and what they bring us. Grab the cropping control here. You can pan it around if you want. Recenter it. Hit save. And there it is. Now, of course, if I just long press on it, I can drag it over to a different screen. And I'll put it next to my Darth Tater photo. And one thing that's common to all the applications is this menu key here always brings up the context-sensitive menu. You can see we're in Google Maps, and these are our options, but there's more options available than it can actually fit across here, so they have a Mort button. And from that point, you can select other ones. See our browsing history. Hit the back button. Go there again. We'll turn on the compass, which is right there. For those that use the keyboard a lot, there are keyboard shortcuts that are activated by using the dedicated search button down here. So if I hold down the search button and hit E, for example, automatically launches the email application. You can customize those shortcuts however you like for whatever applications you want. So let's a quick look at the functionality of T-Mobile's G1, the first Android OS powered smartphone to hit the market. It will be in stores on October 22nd.